Tau bonuses. Ebo. Oya yeah, pele. Nya pele unjal. Nya pele. Ve umuntu o kam vele. Oz oz bambile. No man jeso ya zba mango bang. Bona makeme. Anye kam vele. Ay anye tembu. Ozi zuba no gaban. Mutande gawan tu ilumpu me nyuka sel. E nyuka sel. Ha usuga gote. Oa figa ganjan la echoz. Hanga figa na vazali. Ni in kon. Two thousand or nineteen ninety nine. I'm not sure. Yeah. I should well as well. So so I like how they well. So I'm still learning on what I'm a subject to attend when I like school. Which subjects do you enjoy? Okay, I'm attend the maths, I'm attend the business, the accounting. Yeah, but I'm attend the school that's okay. The business. Yeah. Lama subjects or what kind of things? Meaning, I feel like my subjects. I don't know, but now, but when I when I was in school, a lot of people actually didn't really like. Why what kind of emails and what do you think the importance of what is mathematics is? Um, first of all, emails are eating. I know more people are eating emails. Me, my subjects are what kind of what kind of what kind of things are going to be used in business. What kind of what kind of things are going to be used in business. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so again, the analysis. We are born with the career of new yenza. Now, my subjects work are aligned. Very important. What's your question to our teacher? How do I convert from units of the imperial system to units in the met metric system? Alrighty, guys, let's do this. And I believe the question went like this: How do I convert? from units in the imperial system to units in the metric system. We use the metric system in South Africa and that's using things like kilometers, liters, etc. Et and other countries use the imperial system. So these conversions will be given to you in a test. You will get the conversion to work with and you will just put that into a little equation to work with. So writing down these as ratios and then setting up an equation to solve is one of the ways that makes the conversions quite easy. What you can do is you can do a simple multiplication or division depending on the question of these conversions which we'll look at or you can work it out as a ratio. Alrighty, our first question is the simple one in my opinion just multiplying it and it goes like this. Rahiwa walks 1.2 miles to school. How many kilometers does she walk? They're giving us the system in miles. They're telling us that she walks 1.2 miles and they're asking us how many kilometers does that equate to? And then they give us the um, mile to kilometers ratio to work with. And they said that one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers, which you will be given in a test and it is useful because then you just do simply just multiply them by one another. So 1.2 miles, how many kilometers is this? We know that one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. So we simply would just say 1.2 times 1.6, multiply the miles by the kilometers, and that gives us 1.92 kilometers. Answers may vary if different conversions of you are used, of course, but let's look ex at examples with ratios. A flask holds 1.7 liters of coffee. How many pints of coffee does this flask hold? So we know it holds 1.7 liters, but they are asking us how many pints does it hold? They luckily do give us a thing to work with here and they said that one liter is equal to 1.76 pints. So we know 1.7 liters is the capacity of the flask. We know that 1.76 um, is what you get from one liter. How would we set up this ratio? We know that one liter is 1.76 pints. So we're going to say 1 to 1.76. One liter gives us 1.76 pints. 1.7 liters, we need to know the extent of 1.7 liters in pints. So we're going to put a placeholder of Y there in the ratio and set up our ratio. 1 to 1.76 is equal to 1.7 to our placeholder Y. Now we're going to set up our ratios um, as divisions. Um, we have 1.76 over 1, which will divide by itself and leave us with 1. And then we will say y over 1.7, because we need to know the capacity. Y, y is a placeholder for pints, and we need to know what it is over 1.7, which is the capacity of the flask, the liters. We're then going to do a cross multiplication. Why are we multiplying? Because we know that 1.76 is the pints, 1.7 is the liters, so we're gonna multiply that by one another. One times y is gonna cancel each other out, cross multiply 1.76 by 1.7, and that gives us y is equal to 2.992 pints. So that is how much 
uh, that 1.7 litre pint of coffee is held in pints. Now we have another question. How many pints of coffee does the flask hold? If we use one pint is equal to 570 millilitres. This is an extension of the first question, it's part B. So we're going to use the capacity in part A that was given to us, that the flask holds 1.7 litres. And they're asking how many pints does it hold, but they're telling us that one pint is equal to 570 millilitres, which is a part of a litre. Firstly, we know that the, the flask holds 1.7 litres, so we got to work in the same ratios and convert that 50, 70, 570 millilitres into litres, and then we can work from there. So we would be dividing it by 100, and that gives us 0 0.57 litres is one pint, and 1.7 litres to the placeholder of the capacity in pints. Let's look at it. We're now going to say 1 over 0 0.57. In the other one, we said 1.76 over 1. This one, we're saying 1 over 0 0.57 because 0 0.57 is a part of a 1. And then on the right hand side, we have the placeholder, which we wanted is over 1.7 because we need to find the capacity of what it fits, fits into that 1.7 liters. Again, we're going to do that cross multiplication that we did in the first one. And that will leave us with our W on its own because that's what we want, it's a placeholder, the value of this W. So we have, we'll then take that, it says 1.1 times 1.7 on this side, 0 0.57 multiplied by W, get W on its own. And we're moving that 0 0.57 onto the right. In the previous one, we multiplied the two. In this one, we are dividing because 0 0.57 is part of 1.7. 0 0.57 is part of 1.7 litres, therefore we are dividing it and not multiplying. So our placeholder y goes over here and it's equal to 1.7 divided by 0 0.57 and that gives us w in pints is equal to 2.9 pints. Alrighty guys, let's look at one example. Remember that rounding the final answer off to only one decimal place or to the nearest pint will, resu will result in the same answer. One last example. A cake needs to bake at a temperature of 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Use the conversion, degrees Celsius is equal to degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees divided by 1.8 to calculate at what temperature Celsius the cake needs to bake. Correct to the nearest 10 degrees. This one's really easy, it's very logical. They give you the equation, you slot in it all in the equation and it works itself out for you if you've got a calculator, your lucky friend. So they tell us the equation for degrees Celsius. They want to know what the temperature of degrees Celsius is if you're using 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Here they said that it's degrees Celsius is equal to um, degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees divided by 1.8. So we're going to put the Fahrenheit in the place where it needs to be, and that would be 350 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees divided by 1.8, and you get 176.66. Remember, they told us to round off to the nearest 10, which we will do, and that gives us 180 degrees. Very simple, guys. It's a matter of slotting things into your formulae. If you don't get anything, go on to Moby School, but I also would be on Facebook to help you out a little bit, and we have some more lined up for the next lesson. Sabona sis. Yebo. Unjani. Ngiyaphila unjani. Ngiyaphila nami. Eh sisanathi, ubuye Eastern Cape. Ufike nini Jose? Tfike last year. Okay. And and so far injani experience yakho nje? It's just okay and fun. Yeah. Mina yazi ngathi nangena lana ngatshela abothisha baka anathi ukuthi she is quite a bright learner. Can you just take this time to just speak to other young ladies in South Africa in terms of just a general advice yini amazwe ongawadlulisa to other young ladies in the same age as you in the same grades as you maybe. Yes, I'd like to tell them not to focus on what people say about them but to know who they are and know what they want to pursue in life because here you find different people different characters so yeah i'd like to tell them they must know where their goal is and just be who they are yeah completely know thyself it's utterly important what is your question to our teacher my question is how do i calculate time between the beginning and end of an event 
cool second learner question of the day and it goes like this. How must I calculate the time between the beginning and end of an event? The easiest way to explain this is to do examples. And it is also quite logical. What is the difference between in time between each of the following pairs? They give us 10 past 7 p.m. and 9.20 p.m. So we know that the time difference between 7 and 9 eight, nine is two hours, and the time difference between 10 and 20 is 10 minutes. Therefore, the first answer would be two hours, 10 minutes. The next question is 16 minutes past 9 a.m. and six minutes past 12 a.m. Remember to look at the a.m.s and p.m.s because here there's quite a big time difference considering they're asking us to answer the difference in a.m. They wanna go on to the next day, so the time difference between 9 in the morning and 12 o'clock the next day. What I find is easy with these times is to break it up. So let's first start with the minutes and then maybe go on to the hours and then add and whatever. Between 9 and 10, we have a difference of 44 minutes here. And between 9 and 12 p.m., we have a difference of two hours. So between 16 minutes past nine and 12 p.m. in the afternoon, there's two hours and 44 minutes separating this. Between 12 p.m. in the afternoon and 12 a.m. the next morning, we have a difference of 12 hours and six minutes. We then are gonna add these two together. Two hours plus 12 hours gives us 14 hours and 44 minutes plus six gives us 50 minutes. Therefore, between 9 a.m. 16 minutes past 9 to be exact and 12 a.m. the next morning we have a total time difference of 14 hours and 50 minutes. Next example 19 minutes past 4 a.m. and 9.52 a.m. So what is the difference like I said break it up between 19 minutes past 4 and 5 what is the time in minutes and we've got a time difference of about 41 minutes and that gives us five. So between five and nine, we have five, six, seven, eight. We have four hours <laughs> between five o'clock and nine o'clock. So we know we already have four hours and 41 minutes. We're then gonna add the 41 minutes to the 52 minutes, and that gives us 60, that gives us 93 minutes. We are working with hours here, and we know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, so we're gonna take away those 60 minutes, and that's gonna leave us with an additional 33 minutes. Therefore, all in all, we have five hours and 33 minutes between 19 past four and 9.52 a.m. Between 11.25 p.m. and eight minutes past four, again, we have 35 minutes between 11.25 and 12, plus the four hours and eight minutes between 12 and eight minutes past four. And that gives us four hours and 43 minutes. So break it up guys, work with your minutes first, get to your hours, get to a round number, because it's easier to work with round numbers, and then move on to your minutes. Here's a 90.